of Morning Cafe this lovely Thursday morning, the 21st of March 2024. It's about 89 days gone in this year, about 245 days left to the end of the year. I think we should begin the Christmas countdown anytime soon. Yes? How hot is the coffee where you are? Oh, yes. But first, we begin with the, the whole countdown to Easter. Mm -hmm. the, oh, it's only a week? It's only a week to, to Easter. Oh, yes. Wow, so good to Friday party next week. I've actually forgotten Easter. <laughs> Would you believe it? To end the countdown, cash on. Uh, I'm you, okay, from tomorrow. From tomorrow's. From tomorrow. Oh, yes. Seven days to Easter, as from tomorrow, we begin the countdown. Oh, yes. Yes. And I'm used to really standing here in Gita. Fred, I know you I can see some, I can spot white hair uh, on your head. So today's conversation really touches you. Matters pension, understanding pension, and what and how you can uh, come up with the best of pension. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. I can, I can see the white hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. go, go on. <laughs> so, in the next few years, mm -hmm. when you retire, mm -hmm. because the, you know, the, the, the cap of retirement yeah. is at 60. Yes. And I know you're heading I'm very there. Close to that. You're very close to 60. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> you should be writing notes. And back at home, you should be writing notes on this when it comes to matters pension. Even as a young person, well, the, the Gen Z like us, do we really need to understand matters uh, pension? And how important is it for you? Stick around for that conversation. All right, and speaking of Gen Z, it appears that uh, you are among the unhappiest uh, in this uh, land of ours. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> According to the survey, it says that uh, past 30, but we'll get to that. Uh -huh. uh, it's a whole survey on People Daily. We'll get to that. Speaking okay. of uh, papers. Kenyans are among the world's unhappiest people, according to a new report. We'll be talking about that, but let's, <laughs> let's take a look at the, at the headlines this morning. Not so fast, Mr. President. That's the shouting, screaming headline on The Standard this morning. From The Standard to The Daily Nation, health in crisis, that they're telling you, fall sick on your own peril. Oh, wow. Corona imerudi. Oh, niswali. Niswali. Atuambi. Nijie, corona imerudi. Taifa leo wapo. Mm-hmm. Wenye gazeti la Star Cab Scissors fake fertilizer at uh, National Series and uh, Produce Board. Mm-hmm. On, in business, KCB skips dividend payout for the very first time in 21 years. Yesterday, they were selling off uh, their shareholding in National Bank of Kenya. And they failed to mention the exact price, but today uh, they have. We'll get to that uh, later on. And finally, on the People Daily, big storm in courts over new registrar. These are the headlines in Kenya this morning. Let's take a look at the headlines in uh, neighboring Uganda and Tanzania. Mwenye gazeti la mwananchi mageuzi reli ya tazara ya nukia maswala ya reli yao ya ndelea kuibua mazungumzo. Gazeti la kule bongo. Uganda, the daily monitor mpuga, Bobby Rift widens. Matters parliamentary politics in Uganda. Well, those are the headlines this morning. We'll be looking at some of this. And Uganda enters middle income. Oh, this is a very interesting headline. On the new vision in Uganda. Uh, UN salutes country on strong performance. Wow. And finally, uh, back to Tanzania. China out to cement status as biggest foreign investor. Oh, yes. Interesting. These are the headlines this morning, both uh, within Kenya and beyond, but within the region. We'll be looking at especially the Kenyan headlines uh, later on. Uh, so do stand by for that. But for now. And speaking of uh, taking a look at some of these things, today our Nodari is International Day of Forests. So today, Forest Cabinet Secretary uh, Suipan Tue will uh, be presiding over this year's International Day of Forests, national celebrations at La Riak uh, Forest Station in Laikipia County as of around 10 a.m. So this year's theme is forest and innovation, which basically highlights the new solutions for a better world. And uh, still on the same uh, commemoration of uh, International Forest Day. Uh, so Kenya Forest Service will be hosting a commemoration of this day at uh, BD Creek Conservancy in Jumvuku, that is in Jumvu uh, sub-county. I from uh, trees. So today's uh, the engineers will be uh, voting today and having an election. Uh, that is the Institution of Engineers of Kenya and uh, will be holding elections today to choose, among others, uh, the presidents. So uh, uh, in this particular category, there are two uh, contending, Engineer Shama Kitende and Engineer Grace Kagondo. So the voting will be happening uh, virtually. 
that I will be giving you those updates in the subsequent bulletins just to tell you uh, how that voting process will go on and who will be the next uh, president of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. Uh, from 2024 all the way to 2026, a two-year uh, term limit. Away from that, matters uh, enhancing traffic flows, a conversation that has been happening this entire week and over the weekend. So the Departmental Committee on Transport and Infrastructure is scheduled to have a meeting with the Cabinet Secretary of Matters Interior, that is Professor Kithure Kindiki, as well as uh, Inspector General Jafet Kome, uh, regarding the enforcement of traffic laws aimed at enhancing road safety. And today, as well, is a Global Surveyors Day. So today, uh, today's day marks the importance of a surveyor, the job, as well as work field uh, highlighted and celebrated. That, in a nutshell, is what to expect in our news diary as of today. In Today in History, take you back to 2016, where International Criminal Court convicted a former Congolese vice president of murder, rape, and pillage for commanding troops who committed widespread atrocities in the Central African Republic uh, in between 2002 or the 2003. And that is our cue to uh, now dive into the papers uh, widely. Let's delve into the papers, and today we want to do it differently. We'll start with the People Daily. And the mm -hmm. big headline on the front page of the People Daily is uh, matters to do with the registrar of the judiciary. Big storm in courts of a new registrar. Member of GSC hiring panel raises objections to appointment, but powerful senior counsel dismisses him, claiming he had preferred candidate for influential job. That's the big headline on the front page of the People Daily. Uh, Matters quotes, the other story given prominences on fake fertilizer impounded just before the planting season. Product circulating in various parts of the country goes by the name GPC plus organics. And it is a big discussion, especially for those farmers who've already bought some of this fertilizer and are already preparing their farms with it. The other headline, senior officials moved in major reshuffle. Changes within ministries and state departments affect 135 top civil servants as a response to audit and performance review reports. That's the front page of the People Daily. But before we move from the People Daily, um, we should have this story now about Kenya's happiness ratings. And yes, the headline on page six inside of the People Daily reads, Why Kenya Falls Among World's Unhappiest Lot. Yes. And they say that uh, Kenyans are among the world's unhappiest people, according to a new report. This is the annual United Nations sponsored happiness report, which rates Finland as the world's happiest country for the six year running. Afghanistan, on the other hand, remains bottom of the 2024 world's uh, uh, happiness report, uh, a league table of almost 140 countries. Now, in 140, Kenya is ranking at 114. And this is a drop from the previous 111 in just one year, meaning that uh, we were happier uh, one year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, interestingly, that uh, even in Africa, Kenya comes a distant 17, 17th on the happiness list behind South Africa, Algeria, oh my, Congo, despite all their problems. We, uh, but this is Congo Brazzaville. Brazil. Congo DRC probably can't even uh, make it to the list. Mozambique, uh, Gabon, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Senegal, Nigeria, Cameroon, Namibia, Morocco, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mauritania, Gambia, and Chad. And if I ask you to point out where Chad is on the map of Africa, you would not even know, but apparently they are way happier than us. However, we are relatively happier than our immediate neighbors, Tanzania and Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at number 114, uh, Uganda 117, and Tanzania 131. Only nine places from the bottom. Interesting. Why are we so unhappy? Yeah? 
uh, the, kicker, the, the whole kicker here and they say uh, so the age brackets and mostly you know for uh, millennials and gen z you know before you actually hit 30 in the sub-saharan africa the uh, negative emotions are equal for both genders men and women but then after 30 uh, for negative emotions for women tends to rise according to the report so men after 30 are relatively high relatively women happy, after 30. Yeah. yes interesting uh, I think this is a whole discussion that you should be having on why women are unhappy after 30. Mm -hmm. Why 30? Why yeah? 30? And why are people generally unhappy after 30? Because it would appear that after 30 years, um, across the uh, four age groups categories, uh, Kenya is at position 109 for under 30s, uh, 30 to 44, position 119. And then their unhappiness continues to rise as they grow older. That's it should be really concerning. Probably the discussion about uh, pension too yeah. <laughs> is key. <laughs> yes, Kenyans among the world's unhappiest lot. Oh yes, very unfortunate. Well, that's the People Daily this morning. On uh, on page seven of the People Daily, there's a uh, on the right scroll of it. They say MKU chief says IT spas online study, and according to Professor Simon Gisharu. The shortage of teachers in learning institutions can be addressed adequately through the use of technology that enhances uh, distance learning. That is according to KICD boss chairman, uh, Professor Simon Gisharu. All right, let's uh, take a look at uh, another paper. Uh, we can finish off with uh, Daily Nation and uh, Taif, uh, Standard later on. Yes. But uh, let's take a look at uh, the star now. And on the star, they say Cab Caesars fake fertilizer at a National Series and Produce Boat. So according to the agency, it has so far impounded 5,840 bags bearing its standardization mark. Moise on pages 4 and 5. And they also say the racket bound to hit farmers hard as they grapple with the crippling factors. Wow. On the bottom, take down armed criminals before they get to you. That is according to Cabinet Secretary Interior, Professor Kithura Kindiki, telling the police. And a uh, picture there. He himself, Kindiki, during the commissioning of the first batch of equipment to support the Operation Malizo Halifu at uh, JSU headquarters uh, in Ruaraka yesterday. At the bottom, about three highlights focused there. First off, my ex shot me, shattered by US Dream. That is according to an athlete. But uh, another story that will really affect you and I, listen to this, Cabinet, Cabinet Secretary of Transport, uh, Kipchumba Morkomen, why you will soon pay to use roads and highways on page eight, uh, has to do with the whole toll stations. This is among some of the reasons why we as Kenya are actually, and Kenyans are actually quite unhappy. Mm -hmm. If you really have to pay for every single thing, uh, you'll generally just be unhappy. When you wake up, you know, if you had maybe a thousand bob, uh, it's finished. Before you even start? Before you even start. Okay. Another bit, Kenya, Kenya's member of parliament, or rather key MPs meeting to discuss the NADCO fails to take off again. It was to happen uh, yesterday, uh, co-chaired by uh, Murugara. And uh, at the very top scroll, negotiation time extended. State House calls crisis meeting to end week-long doctor's strike. That is on page two. That is uh, the staff for you. All right. Tuangazie gazeti la taifa leo. Kuna swali pale habari kuu kwenye kurasa wa mbele wa taifa leo. Corona imerudi. Katika muda wiki mbili zilizopita watu wengi wamekuwa na dalili za flu kama kikohozi uchungu kooni. Azungumzia janga jipya madaktari wanatahadharisha kuwa kuna ongezeko la maambukizi ya magonjwa ya kupumua huku baadhi wa wataalamu wa afya wakiahusisha na kurejea kwa COVID-19 habari kamili kwenye ukurasa wa uh, wa pili na ikiwa umekuwa ukijisikia na maumivu kama haya ingekuwa ni vyema utafute matibabu Vidokezo zaidi pale chini kwenye kurasa wa mbele wa taifa leo Arati ateua Elijah Obebo na ibu wake Nyineko kisiki kuhusu ushuru wa nyumba, wataalamu wasema sheria mpya haishughuliki maswala koti iliangazia. Habari zaidi al-Shabab 
arobaini uh, wawawa kwenye vita pale juu kwenye kurasa wa mbele Kenya bado ya lengwa na magaidi ripoti ya sema Kenya kati ya nchi 20 hatarini kushambuliwa na kwenye spoti Real Madrid ya shtaki refari imewasilisha kesi dhidi ya refari kuhusiana na Vinicius Junior hizi ndizo habari zilizopewa kipao mbele kwenye kurasa wa mbele wa taifa leo hii leo right let's talk money matters now and uh, uh, for the second day in a row uh, KCB Bank Uh, is a screaming headline on Business Daily. And this says KCB skips dividend payout for the first time in 21 years. Uh, so why is it? So uh, for the first time, we'll miss out on dividends after the bank reported an 8.3% decline in net profit to about 337.46 million Kenyan shillings in the year that ended uh, December 2023. So the previous year uh, was about uh, 40... Uh, trying to get that... Uh, was an 8.3% higher than that uh, well i can see that uh, figure there uh, but then they say lender reports a 3.8.3% drop in net profit and the deal to sell a uh, national bank of kenya to nigeria's access bank confirmed and uh, so it stands about 13.2 billion shillings on uh, the value of uh, how much has been sold to Nigeria's Access Bank. Are the highlights on this paper on the bottom Treasury spends 560 billion Kenyan shillings on debt service in two months. And of the ticker households dump dirty quote and quote fuels for LPG over high prices and they say liquid petroleum gas uh, as commonly known LPG consumption uh, grew 8% last year as more households dumped kerosene and charcoal over high prices. Still on the tick on the matters economy, two thirds of full-time workers take up side hustles to survive. Uh, they're saying to survive on the whole tough economic times. That is according to a new study. Matters companies, DSTV makes third price change, it raise uh, rates up to 600 and care shillings. And in matters markets, state picks team to exempt farmers from care raise items. And uh, so the, uh, I think the whole deadline for items was about uh, the it was the end of March. End of March, yes. yes. But farmers have been complaining, so there's a new team set up to review that mm -hmm. and see whether or not uh, farmers will get a reprieve. All right, let's well, move on to the standard. Until uh, next week. Oh, yes. On the standard, the big screaming headline reads, Not so fast, Mr. President. Kenyans rushed to court just a day after President Ruto assented to the affordable housing bill saying the new law is discriminatory, ambiguous, and treats public funds and land like a business. They also contend that the national government is usurping the role of counties in provision of housing and that it is KRA that is supposed to collect taxes. Um, yes, the uh, law signed uh, on March 19th and the expected deduction on salaried employees will be 1.5% of the gross. And it should be starting end of this month The grounds for the petitions include the, that the act threatens the freedom to own property by proposing to compel civil servants to participate in a mandatory saving scheme disguised as a means to facilitate property acquisition, that a section of the Affordable Housing Act offends the irrationality doctrine and is also contrary to some articles of the Constitution, that another section of the new act ignores role of Kenya Revenue Authority as a tax collector. Another section provides for a collector of the funds of faceless and shadowy entities not recognized by law and the constitution. And that the state is avoiding its obligations and instead wants ordinary citizens to perform functions of the government. These are just some of the grounds from the various petitions filed following the signing into law of the Affordable Housing Act. Elsewhere... As Kenya Kwanzaa MPs admit to passing bills that they have not read. If you look at the first one and this one, this admission that they did not read a bill that has already been passed into law uh, is very wanting. The tyranny of numbers by government leaning MPs as opposed to scrutiny of the finance bill was the order of the day with the legislators asking the speaker to call for the vote instead of debating it. Eight months later, the very MPs who unanimously passed the act are now ruining not having read the bill as their angry constituents protest. That stories on pages six and seven. These are your MPs, the people you elected 
uh, to go represent you in Parliament. More highlights, economic wars in schools drama and patients' pain, more doctors join strike. That's the front page. Let's flip over and look at matter sports on the back page. Mother and daughter out to conquer 2024 Safari Rally. Wow. And a picture there of Vivo Energy Group Vice President Marketing uh, Anne Gitao with Tinashe Gatimo, rally driver, and Caroline Gatimo, who are mother and daughter duo. The two ladies are ready to create their legacy as a mother-daughter rally team. The pair was unveiled by OMC Vivo Energy Kenya as part of its one-decade commitment to investing in women in motorsport discipline. They'll be taking part in the rally. Uh, I think uh, next week. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's the standard this morning. All right. On the Daily Nation, they tell you, don't fall sick uh, in Kenya today. Usijaribu. Usijaribu. Matters of health in crisis. Uh, so it's a whole dispute. Patient suffers government doctors union uh, failed to agree uh, to return on return to work formula. So they... Uh, have a whole chronological of uh, C.S. Nakumicha's woes, striking doctors paralyzed services in public hospitals. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a whole photo yesterday of uh, the cabinet secretary storming in into uh, a theater room in one of yeah, the hospitals. An operating theater, yes. An operating theater without the proper gear. And this had Kenyans, you know, uh, talking. She, she was cooked, that, that, that's the term they use, she was cooked <laughs> properly <laughs> on social media. Well. Uh, you know some of these things, uh, you, you're just trying to show that you're working, but then again it comes off as being uh, uh, totally disconnected from what's happening on the ground. Other wars that uh, the CS is facing include the uh, Care Medical Association wants state to revoke ITIM's directive or else. Uh, also, private hospitals in rural areas have rejected NHIF cards. Well, this is uh, due to the whole uh, massive six billion cash shillings owed by the national insurer. Another war, as HIF rollout put off as court case against it starts. And an activist is asking a three-judge bench of the High Court to quash the new health laws because they are unconstitutional. This just seemed like uh, too many wars uh, under one's shoulders. Mm -hmm. And they say it is day seven of a doctor's strike in public hospitals to demand better working conditions. Posting of medical interns in a medical cover. And uh, just among what I had highlighted earlier. That is uh, more on pages six and seven. But uh, even as the CS is facing matters wars on the bottom, the president might be facing other wars. Mm -hmm. They say housing levy faces yet another legal hurdle. Uh, they say, so this whole legal hurdle in his bid to implement the affordable housing project after new application seeking to quash the initiative was filed in court yesterday at an, uh, by an akuru based surgeon. I remember on Monday we were talking about, uh, so this might, as much as is going to be assenting it now on Tuesday, uh, but then someone might pull a fast one. And move to court. It was yeah. expected. Oh, yes. Uh, we just need to see if at all the courts will give any pronouncements on the matter that will affect the deductions this month. <laughs> on the right, uh, matters fight back, still in courts. Abed Nasir sues for 200 million uh, cash shillings of a Supreme Court burden. Uh, rather, court ban. The matters politics, Raila, as male leader Raila Odinga and o o ODM leader, Raila Dinga seems to have toned down his anti-government stance, choosing to concentrate on his mission for the continental job, even as he pushes for his party's revival. I was on page four. Uh, now, Fred, when you take a look at this and you juxtaposition it with last year, mm -hmm. the papers that were on the 21st of March, 2023. Uh, on this front page, it was Mandamano, mm -hmm. uh, you know, covering in many, many acres of this paper. And no one knew that one year later, this is what we will be talking about. We're talking about taxes and uh, crisis in health and uh, MPs failing to do their job. Oh, yes. And even uh, the organizer of this, of the Mandaman of last year. Oh, uh, he's nowhere to be seen on any of the dailies. Have you seen Ray Lodinga's name on any of the papers this week? 
I, I can't recall the last time I saw his name on a front page. And uh, well, it, just a mention of him uh, going slow and uh, shaking the hand of uh, Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame. And that's a file as picture. He, oh, yes. So as, where exactly, as he eyes a huge. Oh, no, where exactly is Raila Odinga? Will the real Raila Odinga please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Someone is looking for you. Uh, because last year, time like this, it was chaotic. All right, let's take a look at the cartoons. Uh, uh, oh, oh, you are still to look at the back page. Yes. Okay. Uh, a final one at the very top scroll. Flu or COVID is what they're asking. So doctors warning amid outbreak and the surge in respiratory infections raises alarm. It was on page seven. And at the back page, conversation that has been going on since Monday. Uh, Coupet in threat to strike over delayed schools cash, another looming strike. And uh, the proposal, uh, PS says ministry is considering slashing capitation per student. So they quote some numbers there. Let me read them for you. 22,244, that is the capitation per secondary school student in Kenya shillings. The ministry wants to cut this to 17,000. And 3,877 is amounted in Kenyan shillings per student that the government has released to schools so far. That is just quite worrying. On uh, the right, a final one. MPs want details of 7 billion payment for unconsumed electricity made public. So yesterday they were saying they're capping the electricity and the power shortages to, was it 20? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right now they want uh, then consumed electricity made public. And those are uh, the papers for you. Now into the caricature. Yes, and uh, we were looking for Raila Odinga. We found him mm -hmm. on page 17 of the Daily Nation in the cartoon section, no less. And uh, the cartoon of the Daily Nation today has a caricature of the uh, Azimio leader, Raila Odinga, walking away while whistling. And his whistle is just singing, A-U. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he's left behind a group of people who are con totally confused. The Azimio vehicle has already broken in two. The chassis and wheels are disconnected from uh, the body of the vehicle. So people are confused. And uh, just like we were asking, where's Raila Odinga? They too appear to be looking for Raila Odinga. <laughs> yes. That's a cartoon on page 17 of the Daily Nation. On page 14 um, of the standard... The cartoon talks about, okay, fine, this is beyond now Kenyan uh, news. It is uh, what's happening globally, matters climate change and the wars. So climate change and wars uh, appear to be kicking the world, which uh, is round and rolling down a steep slope, towards extinction. So climate change and wars uh, could render humanity as we know it extinct if we continue this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the cartoon on page 14 of The Standard. Right, two more uh, cartoons. We can have them. Uh, we're direct, uh, we can start with page 10 of uh, People Daily. I'll also be taking a look at, uh, I think, page 3 of uh, The Star uh, for you. On uh, page 10. Uh, right, just taking a look at uh, what uh, Stano's tick uh, has. And uh, the gentleman there with a very huge belly says, pull up your socks, you can do better than that. And it uh, has to do with matters of revenue from the common monanchi. And uh, there's the whole target, or rather the travel expenses. And remember, uh, this is actually the counties. Mm -hmm. and this was a whole conversation on Monday. Uh, how much counties are really using and the whole travel splash. Mm -hmm. uh, when you take a look at what different counties are using versus their in-source revenue. Uh, some counties uh, had way past half of uh, the onsource revenue into the uh, travel splash. And that lady there, the one uh, making a contribution towards that revenue, uh, reminds me of the lady in, uh, the woman in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gave this story of the woman who went into the synagogue and gave all she had. It was only one coin. And uh, Jesus said that is the person who's given the most, not the person who gave more money, but this one who gave her all. And uh, it would appear the Kenyan public, oh, and yes. uh, we can draw parallels with that woman there. Even as we prepare for page three, I've never had you quote the Bible like that, as strongly as. Yeah. Yes. I tell you, <laughs> I should I, I should quote it a bit more <laughs> and teach you a few issues about religion and faith, because now you think I'm faithless. <laughs>
<laughs> which which book and verse is that? Uh, 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 I will Google that one. Then I'll let. You, uh, I'm looking for the Star Cartoon, and um, probably we can look at it later. Mm -hmm. But yes, we'll be looking at some of these headlines and a lot more with our panelists later on on State of the Nation. Um, we're hoping to have in studio uh, Beatrice Selachi, MP Dagoriti North, uh, Fred Ogola, Economic and uh, Governance Expert, and Jeremiah Kioni, Secretary General of Jubilee Party, in studio to discuss these headlines. And you can be part of that conversation as well uh, through our social media pages on X at TV47 News and on Facebook, TV47 Kenya. Later on. Later on, uh, getting into matters, pension schemes and retirement plans. Victor Ndago, a pension supervisor at uh, Orient Life Assurance Limited, will be joining us just to understand how uh, you can make the best out of your pension scheme and how early you should really start to have these kind of conversations. And later on, uh, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., look for your sport shoes and have a very nice place to do some fitness uh, today, uh, getting into some full body mobility and what you really need to know. Wow. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're stretching and you know, doing everything, the nitty gritties of everything that you do. This is the whole focus today on Fitness Thursday. All right. Time now for a break. We'll be back with a lot more. You're watching Morning Cafe.
unveiled a set of interactive screens that will be used in online studies. The 18 screens that were handed over to the school by Board of Directors Chairman Professor Simon Gisharu are a major milestone in the digitization of learning at the institution. Student leaders and dons who are present during the handing over loaded the move saying it will now be easier to conduct technical tutoring online. That's to the technology. The, uh, if you have this kind of scenario, interactive display. Be engage Arana. This is the latest addition in the education sector at Mount Kenya University, all in a bid to reach full, full digitization of learning. The 18 brand new screens were presented to the university by the chairman of the board of directors at MKU, Professor Simon Gisharu, who expressed confidence that the technology is a step from introduction of artificial intelligence to the institution. Talking about uh, artificial intelligence and I'm looking forward with some of our partners so that we can be able to do uh, an AI lab within Mount Kenya University. We want to see how can we be able to leverage in terms of uh, AI to make our university the best. Vice-Chancellor Professor Diogracious Jagani has also mentioned the need for the screens, saying the current generation is leaning more towards technology, hence a necessary incorporation of digital learning. It is a high time that MKU to fully embrace the fourth industrial revolution by entrenching technology-mediated modalities for teaching and learning in order to meet teaching and learning needs. Cape Media's director of operations, Wilson Bugu, has also mentioned that the sister company of MKU may be advantaged by such technology. So for anchoring and presentation of the news, it's going to be one of the useful gadgets that we can enjoy as Cape Media, TV47 having it. Digitization of learning is a topic that has been one of the pillars of academic excellence in Mount Kenya University. And it's one of... Uh the issues that uh, we have committed as a division to be able to push forward so that we can make uh, our teaching and learning good. Vera Alberta, 247 Nairobi. Right to the health crisis now, the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union, the KMPD, is set to hold a procession Thursday today across the country to petition the government to give a listening ear to their demands. Despite a call for talks on Monday, which proved futile, High Court has since declared the doctor's strike as illegal. Even as the Minister of Health, leadership urges the union to go back to work. The union, on the other hand, has insisted that until its demands are met, the strike will continue. Another day of the doctor's strike, claims of the Ministry of Health turning a deaf ear to the demands by the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentist Union remains. The union that has held protests for a period of seven days now have threatened to head to the streets on Thursday and Friday across the counties. On Friday, they will have a full day uh, demonstration on the streets to illustrate the bewilderment or frustration that we have, we have experienced at our places of work for the last seven years. This comes a day after allegations that the Ministry of Health and the Salaries and Remuneration Commission came to an agreement on the stipends to be paid to medical interns, to which the doctors' unions responded to the letter, indicating that the stipends were still low in comparison to the nature of their work. We saw yesterday when the Ministry of Health reduced the salary of interns by 91%, and this morning they were filing the same in court. Yet we know this was done on the back door. This was done in contravening the CBA of 2017-2021. So in the morning, we managed to close the services and the emergency services that are being done at Kenyatta National Hospital. And we are here with all the doctors at KUTTRH to also close the services. We are here and we made a resolution that even the bare minimum services, the emergencies that were being offered at KUTTRH are now closed. Health Principal Secretary Hari Kimutai on his part has stated that the ongoing doctor's strike is illegal following High Court's decision where he assured that the government has begun implementing some of the demands raised, urging the union to respect court orders and resume to work. Nairobi County Governor Johnson Sakaja has also ordered for the resumption of Nairobi striking doctors to the areas of work within 12 hours. It if they own their part of the negotiations, they also need to call off the strike and come to the table as directed by the court. Because it's when we discuss, is when we shall resolve those issues. I am addressing not just the union, I'm addressing the individual doctors in Nairobi who have an individual term of service with the county government that we have hired you to offer a service to our people. 
Everything you have requested for has been given. There is no issue with your employer that needs a strike. Go back to work. If you don't go back to work, that is deemed as it's a disciplinary issue actually. The medics intend to start the procession from the Kenyatta National Hospital, Ngong Road, Ministry of Health, Parliament, National Treasury and subsequently to the Council of Governors in Westlands. Among their demands are the posting of medical interns, release of funds allocated for the deployment of the interns and payment of postgraduate fees. On February, Dr. Teller was hit and injured by a tear gas canister thrown by the police during a doctor's demonstration, prompting the doctors to call for the shutdown of all public hospitals in the country in protest of the attack. Until now, health services across the country remain paralyzed. Moving on, the Kenya Bureau of Standards Cabs was compelled to remove 5,840 bags deemed unsatisfactory from the market after quality examination found the fertilizer's brand's bags did not meet quality requirements. During her appearance before the National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Agriculture, Cabs Managing Director Estangare disclosed that uh, the BLGPC original fertilizer was not organic when the supplier had faked the standardization markings. Mike Kagongo with the details. Kenya Bureau of Standards Cabs has distanced itself from the says fertilizing various national cereals and produce board and CPB depots across the country. Appearing before the Parliamentary Committee on Agriculture and Livestock, Cabs Managing Director Eston Curry stated that the fertilizer in question, which has been flagged as being unsuitable for use, is neither certified by Cabs nor in the government subsidy program. We have the samples already with us and we have seen the failure, especially in terms of organic matter, the absence of organic matter in the, in the product. Fertilizer ought to have 70% organic matter, but Kebs found that the particular fertilizer only had 40% organic matter and included the atomic components. Tests conducted on SBL Innovate Limited's BLGPC original fertilizer revealed that it was subpar and should not be sold in the country, according to the Kebs managing director. Having known about this, Whereas it has not been registered for standardization by CAPS, have they carried out a background check? At some point, they went ahead and started packaging a different product and using the mark illegally. So what we would call that is a criminal activity and they should not have been using the mark on the product. She did, however, disclose that Kebs just recently discovered that SBL Innovate Manufacturers Limited had violated the agreement as a result of public complaints. According to Ngari, the standardization mark number 60392, which was assigned to organic fertilizer, has been suspended in light of the disclosures. What you see uh, what had been printed on the paper was actually that specific license number you had issued for the organic, organic fertilizer you had, uh, you had licensed, but the product was different. Am I right? Because of the failures that we realized after we did the tests, we went ahead and um, we withdrew the product. We, we suspended the permit and we were able to uh, we withdraw the product to seize all the products that are on sale under the NCPB warehouses. Kebs claims that in the wake of the occurrence, stringent steps have been put in place to guarantee the quality of agricultural inputs, particularly fertilizers. Mike Kagwongo, TV47, Nairobi. Right, let's take on uh, the whole wars that farmers are facing. And President William Ruto has issued a stern warning to manufacturers and distributors of counterfeit farm inputs, cautioning that those found guilty will face consequences. This on the same day that the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service, KFIS, and the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI, confiscated 13 packets, 13,000 packets of counterfeit maize seeds worth 13 million Kenya shillings. The uh, fake seeds were seized in a timber yard within Jorosup County in Nakuru, as Chichi Josephine now tells us. Farmers are in shock following the discovery of a venture that was counterfeiting maize seeds in Joro, Nakuru County. 
The discovery was made during a joint raid at Gulf Estate by the county intelligence team and officers from the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service, CAFIS, an operation that led to the discovery of items that may have exposed farmers to the risk of purchasing poor quality seeds. Una seeds ambazo ziko nyuma yetu, ziko na the accountafited, ziko na makaratasi ya Kenya seeds, na walipata 101 kg ya treated maize, which means ilikuwa tayari ikitoka iuziwe wakulima wetu. Nakuru County Commissioner Lloyd Ford Kibara said it was unfortunate that some unscrupulous individuals have been taking advantage of the planting season to package and sell uncertified seeds to farmers. Na nitaadhalisha wa Kenya maali popote waliko wakati huu. Wawe kiafu sisi tutaendelea kusaka hawa because kuna ezakuwa kuna wengine tuwakikishi ya kwamba wa Kenya wanapata mbegu ambayo ina eshimika ambayo inaweza fanya kazi mzuri The head of seed certification and plant of variety protection at Kefis Mr Simon Miner said their officers will continue inspecting seeds sold in the country to ensure farmers are not duped by unscrupulous traders We are into the planting season and so we have seen a number of crooks have come up We are on high alert at Kefis we have sent our officers across all parts of the country they are checking out the quality of the seed and you are working with farmers and all people who have information. Maindi hii yote umeona hapa na packaging hiyo. Ange yuza, ange pata 13 million Kenya shilling. A lot of money. Iyu ulagai, uko. The discovery came at a time there has been a huge public outcry after many farmers discovered that they had been duped into purchasing fake farm inputs with President William Ruto now issuing a stern warning to manufacturers and distributors of counterfeit farm inputs. We are also going to make sure that those who sell fake seeds or fake fertilizer face the music that they deserve. The president cautioning that those caught engaging in such practices will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. We must eliminate corruption. We must deal with those who want to sabotage our fertilizer program firmly, effectively and conclusively. Chichi, Josephine TV 47. All right, thank you, Chichi, for that. And that wraps up our news updates for you this morning. But more context on this, uh, bits and more in the state of the nation. Uh, the whole team is right here. Member of Parliament, Great North, uh, Beatrice Salachi, uh, Secretary General of Jubilee Party, Jeremiah Kuni, as well as Professor Fred Ogola, uh, economic and governance expert. Uh, stick around for this conversation. Fred Indimoli will be joining you after this short break. You can be part of this conversation at about 2047. is our SMS number at TV47KE on uh, Facebook. See you in a bit.
27 with me, Fred Indimole. Time for us to take a look at the state of the nation. This morning, we're privileged to have in studio Beatrice Selachi, MP Dagoreti North. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Next to uh, Madame Elachi, we have Fred Ogola, uh, Professor Fred Ogola, economic and governance expert. Always a pleasure to have you in studio. Asante Ndugu Last but definitely not least, Jeremiah Kioni, uh, Secretary General Jubilee, Jubilee Party, also joins us this morning. Karibu sana. Yes, thank you, sir. Lady and gentlemen, the headlines are very interesting this morning. Not so fast, Mr. President. That's a screaming headline on the standard today. Health in crisis uh, on the Daily Nation. But perhaps the best and most interesting also features on the front page of the standard. Kenya Kwanzaa MPs admit to passing bills that they have not read. We've talked about uh, the performance of this 13th Parliament at uh, Madame Elachi. You bear me witness. Even the last week we were here with you and we discussed at length uh, the performance of uh, members of the National Assembly in this 13th Parliament. Now, this admission happened at the residence of um, the Deputy President, uh, who had called a meeting to discuss uh, the crisis with farmers in Mount Kenya, uh, with the new taxation measures and collection of taxes by KRA. And uh, according to uh, the standard, they say the tyranny of numbers by government leaning MPs as opposed to scrutiny of the finance bill was the order of the day when the legislators uh, with the legislators asking the speaker to call the vote instead of debating it. Eight months later, the very MPs who unanimously passed the act are now ruing not having read the bill as their angry constituents protest. Should we uh, have any uh, feeling of sympathy for these members of parliament, uh, your colleagues, Madam Elach? Sympathy in what? <laughs> <laughs> They now find themselves in a corner, yeah. and finally they've admitted that they did not properly scrutinize the bill. Um, whose job is it? Uh, it uh, as a member of parliament, I'm sure uh, you're provided with enough staffers to go through bills uh, to inform you on what uh, issues you can contribute to as a member of the National Assembly. Uh, you do not necessarily have to go through the entire bill yourself. Well, it's, but it's, yes, I know it's good to have somebody who can sit down and just do a summary. Mm -hmm. But it is always good, even if the bill has passed, continue reading the bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, you don't just pass the bill and then you're done. Continue reading the bill. Yeah, that vote is actual even before you pass it, because you could be passing something that would really affect your constituents. And that is exactly what's no, no, happening. That's why I'm members. saying yeah. to honorable members, I know. I know it's, it's, it's what we do. It's very sad. We, 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 we refuse after we have passed. You see, the, the most important time now to read is after it has passed. After you see it's moving through, please start reading it because it will also affect you at one given point. But I know it is a weakness to members. We don't read. And that's the challenge, because even if you ask today, members, did you ever impose a levy on spaghetti? They will tell you no, but it is there. Did you ever ensure um, ch ch children homes, their donations, people who used to bring donations, today cannot bring because mm -hmm. they are being charged tax? They will tell you we never. I mean, it's very unfortunate, but that is how we are. So I would plead to them, read. Even the housing one, you know, even this week I have been saying, have we read the whole thing? Because I remember we, in a very frustration way, I, Irene Mayaka and um, uh, Undo, Dr. Undo, tried to really persuade some things but I know, first of all, I realized, okay, we can't deal with it anymore because you have come, you have agreed, and been concurrent, we've agreed with Senate. You see, the best is to table the report that came with Senate and you pass. But yes, we went through again, uh, Committee of the Whole, uh, for people to understand. And they were, again, the same. What we asked is what has been taken again to court. Exactly. And I remember even um, Professor Nikal really pretty, I say, this, let us think through again so that we don't go back to court. Okay. And, uh, and, 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 and here we are. Uh, I remember very well this issue of uh, civil servants. I also really uh, felt even in the beginning, it was uh, to me that close on civil servants is not very fair, especially 
those who are about to retire in two years, mm -hmm. you don't put them in this scheme at all. And because professor already they have a red flag in the, the system of payroll that is showing very soon you're about to leave. Yeah. So you... Uh, yeah, or, the deductions uh, will continue. And the deductions. Maybe those are the ones who will use the clause that Senate brought in that you're able to do 90 days. Uh, and, and you can withdraw. Okay. Maybe. Uh, Professor Golo, we've always been asking this question on whether or not the National Assembly offers any proper quality to the executive. Uh, because it may start, uh, may have started off as a political tack, uh, having a, a tyranny of numbers, as they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, by f failure to scrutinize properly these bills, is what why we're ending up with such headlines not so fast mr president on the front page of the standard mm -hmm. and all the things as uh, madame elachi points out it's so easy to pick them out mm -hmm. uh, being challenged in court surely some of these things would have been remedied by the national assembly yeah <clears throat> fred i i surely say that the members of parliament lack very very critical even understanding of their role forget about even reading the bill because this misnomer in the country that we have majority in parliament. There is no such a thing. You know that according to the structure of the constitution, parliament is now the opposition. And I'm happy that uh, SG for Jubilee is here because they are now talking about an article report where they want leader of opposition without understanding that the parliament is the opposition mm -hmm. because we remove these things from a parliamentary system because parliamentary system is where you have opposition and government. Under pure presidential system, the opposition is the parliament in totality. Mm -hmm. By them saying now we have majority in parliament, so no one is reading, is not even understanding what is the role of the, what is the role of parliament in the current 2010 constitution. And then secondly, which I think I have, I have really complained about, that it was clear that 2022 election, the discussion was more economic. But the citizens failed to elect MPs who understand economics. Finance bill and the act is purely an economic document. Mm -hmm. How many members of parliament understand the implication of those things? Reading, you can read it. You can read it like a storybook. But do you read and see the implications of this? I was the one who went in public and told the members of parliament, and even the Senate, if you pass this bill, even you will struggle to get your salary paid mm -hmm. because this won't collect the taxes. It was very clear, it's not working. And I can refer you to a study which has just been done by showing that, that, uh, uh, that uh, the, 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 the percentage of customers who have alternative source of income has dropped by 58%. Businesses are closing because of the Finance Act. Mm -hmm. And yet the president thinks they can collect money because of the Finance Act. Actually, he'll collect less because of the Finance Act, yet the Finance Act was supposed to make him collect more. Mm -hmm. And I think the members of parliament are not helping him. Uh, and the, I, I heard the president saying that Finance Act 2023 was the most talked about. It's true, but what were I talking about? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Every discussion, we were, we were always on television here. I tell people, this thing is wrong. They say, oh, we have the numbers. Oh, we have the numbers. The only discussion was tyranny of numbers. Tyranny of numbers does not translate to tyranny of economics. And I think that it is time to show that the fact that the, the majority must have their way, even if minority has their say, that is now false. Okay. Because it has taken us, the you know, majority of the people in parliament who are not having the intellectual capacity to scrutinize the bill and give us the right direction is turning Kenya into uh, a, a bad way. And my last point, which I want to make here, is that time has come because Parliament, remember we have so people, Kenya with sovereign, sovereign power it belongs to the people. They donate to Parliament to help them, but this Parliament has failed them. Okay. It is high time we recall this Parliament plus the executive. Mm -hmm. That's why Linda Jami is going to to give amendment bill on how to change 
uh, Article 1 of the Constitution to allow citizens to recall the president or deputy president directly without calling through parliament. And we'll come back because to parliament has really been emasculated we'll with money, not even the numbers. We'll come back to that discussion it's, it's about money. They have been uh, recalling members of parliament because it is a provision in the Constitution. Let's go back to the issue of tyranny of numbers. It is not the first time when Akioni we are hearing about tyranny of numbers. Mm -hmm. Jubilee, uh, the Jubilee administration enjoyed the tyranny of numbers for quite a long time. Um, but uh, there's, it's one thing to have the tyranny of numbers and, and not totally different to get quality from the tyranny of numbers. Mm. Uh, it would appear that Kenya Kwanzaa is not getting proper quality uh, from the numbers they have. Yes, it is simply rubber stamping a law that would then encounter legal challenges in court. It is tyranny of numbers versus tyranny of the brain. Mm -hmm. And I, I, really, I don't know who which member of parliament coined it during our time. And it was a real challenge because uh, what you need are brains. You don't need numbers in uh, on the floor of parliament, even as uh, Professor has said here. In the way the, the, it is structured, he's given me a book here, uh, <laughs> Solomonic Economics, and he, he's written something interesting. Mm -hmm. Wisdom cannot coexist with poverty. Wisdom cannot coexist with poverty. There's something wrong. Uh, one, I, I totally agree with what my colleagues have said. Two is that uh, having served in the last parliament and having served under the old constitution, I can tell you that um, um, it will take something different for the current parliaments, including the one I served in, to ever match those which were there before we got our 2010 constitution. Are you saying the problem uh, started yeah, much earlier? It's, not, something there. it's one not unique is, to the 13th I, party. Yes, <laughs> I think one is that we, we, we seem to be losing brains and getting in uh, what you are now calling numbers. And uh, you see in Mount Kenya is what they are calling to get guess. You, know, mm. you, you bring too many people uh, who not be able, cannot even tell you the process of making a law. What, what are the steps? And I say this without any, uh, with a little, not with a little, but it's a really sad state of affairs because you rely on the people's representative uh, to, you know, to make lives, life a little better for you. And uh, every time you think the executive is pushing you, your hope is with your person uh, who is there representing you. I saw this um, with uh, Speaker Moturi. That's where it starts. I think uh, they have said it before that uh, the Samaki Nanza Kuosa Kwa Kichwa. During that time, I saw Moturi refusing on a number of occasions to even think through the bill, whether it is constitutional or not. A question on the constitutionality of any legislative agenda on the floor, he would say, that is not your work. Kazi yako ni kupitisha sheria, the one who determine whether it is constitutional or not, is the judiciary. And you were speaking about the speaker who was from and the it, Jubilee side. Yes, and it has, you know, mm -hmm. maneno ya shida, haina maneno ya jubilee ama, ama uda ama nini. Mm -hmm. Shida ni shida. Nobody is paying school fees. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are suffering all over, and it is not a question of uh, which party. There is nobody who voted for our lives to get worse. Mm -hmm. Since we voted to go to Rasema, to kipigia wa kula, our lives will be better. And I saw that. that I'm seeing that because that is when I thought we are losing it. And during I had served at the Marende, Marende was very meticulous on finding, is this bill constitutional? Are we going to get in trouble when we are taken to court? Are we going to get embarrassed? That was always his question. And he has a team of people who would help, you go through, would help him go through, including the legal department. Today, is Sharia Mekuja, Petisha. And that is one of the biggest problems that we are having uh, on the floor today. The other thing is that uh, then there was uh, there are some individuals who become who are not very, very favorable to the speaker, and they always sit to the right of the speaker, very near his ear. Mm -hmm. And their work, and I think one of them was Dr. Uh, Pokose during my time. His work, and you knew he is a doctor, mm -hmm. medical doctor, top notch in terms of uh, his profession, and his call was put the question. Mm -hmm. Put the question. And every time you hear put the question, <laughs> we can fast. Nobody is going to interrogate the bill. It does not matter which, what you say in the opposition, if you're in the opposition, even if you're in government, it no longer matters. The issue is that those who are running the show have decided to push the question. I sat in a meeting with a member of parliament, I will not mention his name, but I was in Moranga. And we were uh, with about 300, 400 wazes in some one of the constituents. And the member of parliament said in my presence, and you know, even the pastors, when they go through the Bible, and they, there is always a time they say that, I have never had that verse in mm -hmm. the Bible. And they are equating the Bible to the finance. I said, God, 
how can you come and confess that to your own voters that you can allow a piece of registration to go through without you, their representative, having scrutinized it? Today, again, if you compare this parliament and the previous parliament under the old constitution, how many private members' bills have gone through? Mm -hmm. You almost get zero since we got our new constitution. I've actually seen a headline to that effect. Uh, members being warned that failure to attend uh, the Wednesday session will see their private bills. And they never go off. anywhere. They, yes. Because I cannot remember, I would want to know how many private members' bills have gone through since 2010. Mm -hmm. What am I, what, where am I driving? <laughs> I think, and you had uh, the, the majority leader, you know, <laughs> what Professor has said, Ichongwa. One announcing to us, you know we are the government. Mm -hmm. In parliament, he was saying, you know we are the government. And he said, God. Yeah. Okay. He's not the parliament. We know, you know we are the executive. Mm -hmm. We are the government. He was actually meaning we are the executing on the floor of the House. Meaning there's total oh, lack of understanding of, of the where role of parliament. members of parliament stand. Yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm quoting here, uh, there were quite a number of MPs on Tuesday at Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa's official residence. Uh, there was uh, Mary Waidera of Maua of Maragua, Joseph Munyoro of Kigumo, Shege Njuguna of Kandara, Edward Muriu Gatanga, and John Mutunga Tigania West. And uh, they're facing the electorate's wa uh, wrath. Or Maua's remarks claiming that MPs were not in a position to go through the entire legislation did not satisfy. Uh, the growers, because she said, to those asking why Kenya Kwanza MPs passed the Finance Act without noticing and removing some proposed taxes, such as the new avocado tax, which is a big problem there. Um, she said the finance bill is a big document to know every, every nitty gritty. Ask part, uh, pastors, and it's the same uh, <laughs> uh, comment, who have a Bible by their side every day. They can't know all the verses in the Bible, uh, said the second term MP. Um, Maybe as you're going to the Arashi. Now, there were before the, the deputy president, who also sits in the cabinet. There is no bill that comes to the floor of the house without having passed through the cabinet. Ataye kwa cabinet, atwabia likuwa na anahezabu imaayi anan. Yeah, okay. Uh, and the deputy president himself uh, likened the finance act to an exam where he said you get 70%, but of course there are corrections. But who is going to correct this? If at all, no one is reading it. No one is understanding what's there. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, those who have gone to court have picked out uh, very fast within a day after it's uh, 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 assented into law. Um, who, who is going to do this work if not the national? The lawyers will always be smart. They cannot tell you it's inside there they, they, because they are you'll take their jobs. So you mm -hmm. have to wait until it passes. But anyway, you see for us, uh, <laughs> a few of us sit in the house when we, are, when we know we are in Nairobi and we are supposed to be in the house. We go through these things. We question. I think if anyone goes to our hands, we question. And, and, and it's not that we, 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 I don't know why the executive fears that parliament will never do the right thing. We, we will. Questioning means you have brought it in parliament for us to amend to make it better. But there's also a concern that even the minority side in parliament uh, is also uh, abdicating its role of having its say that uh, we see more and more uh, walkouts from the House whenever there's such a debate a because they know have never uh, out, we don't we, our numbers won't matter so we'd rather not no, be no, here. No, no, no. As we stay in and we will wait, we shall be given uh, an opportunity. You will speak on it. And I have always said, I have repeated many times, how I wish we can understand we decided to borrow the American system. In a presidential system, you have the minority. Fine. But I have called, I, I think for the last few days, I have reminded Parliament, we were given an opportunity by Kenyans that they gave us the role to do budgets. So even if you ask the president here, yeah, to be very honest, I will remove him from the mess because he has not come with a gun in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one, I'll throw it back to our leadership in Parliament. I'm not too harsh on the Kenya Kwanza MPs. Uh, the ones on the minority side, are they doing justice to the debate as well, but Professor Gola? Do you feel well, well, that... Well, uh, first of all, before you go to Prof, uh -huh. I will say this. Justice we can do. But how many are we doing that justice? Because also, it is for you to catch the speaker's eye. So you can't blame people and say 
they are not debating. How will you debate when you have not been given even the opportunity to debate? But probably, in if at all, you had your say as a member of the Yeah, maybe three people. Be able to let let me give you an example. Places. Let me just give you an example. And I won't say who. You, are in the, you, you come in early. You put in your card. Do you know you can sit there for like two hours? Two hours. And nobody has seen you. The speaker's eye, speaker has not catched your eye. You can't go and fight. And there are those who deliberately, I will, I will tell you, and I, I mean, I want to appreciate, they are, I won't say their names, but there are those when they're on the chair, they will balance. There are few when they're on the chair, they will look on their side, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the biggest mistake we did, and SG is here, is now, you know, all the, the positions we gave our brothers all went on the other side. So you find on one side, of, you have maybe one speaker only, and, and you, have to, you have to go through. Totally dysfunctional. Uh, yes. Uh, it's I, not a dysfunctional. <clears throat> I'm just saying, that's how, by the way, that's how parliaments function, even me when I was a speaker. I, I, I'll do the same. I mean, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's a political house. Okay. So you have to, but then, if you allow, uh, how I wish, you know, the, the challenge we face today is not even about the house, the, the members in the house. You see, when the leadership understands that this is how we are going to function in our parliament, and I always say, the way Duwale and Badi, and uh, SG is here, will tell you, at a point, they will protect the house. You see, we need the leadership to protect the house. When I say the leadership, it is uh, my leader of the majority, Kemani Shungwa, to start appreciating that this is parliament. It is not state house. It is parliament where you protect your house because you are the leader. And if anything goes wrong, like there's nothing as wrong and we keep on telling them how sad it is that we can be able to do these things in the house. But because you are in a hurry, because you don't even think through, you will always let the courts mm -hmm. to now be the ones to rectify Professor, all the mistakes we do. We may I mean, have, it's we may very have, sad. We may have all the brilliant economic ideas, yeah. but without a proper parliament to scrutinize yes. and point us in the right direction, we are going nowhere. So Fred, I've told you that if parliament do not understand their role, they don't understand that they are the opposition, the legitimate opposition. And they are trying to see themselves like within parliament, there is government side and non-government, which was in the previous constitution. <coughs> this parliament is still operating under previous constitution. They have, they have not had a, a, a mind shift. Mm -hmm. They need to have a mind shift. Mm -hmm a paradigm shift from the previous con constitution to this one. And uh, let me just tell, to tell you why the problem began. The problem began with the author. Who was the author of this bill that even members of parliament cannot understand? The chair of budget cannot understand, makes mistake. I have always said that this finance act was drafted on the seventh floor of Times Towers by IMF and World Bank. And I have evidence, because if you look at the presentation of the budget immediately of the Finance Act, Professor Jungun Andungo, who is my fellow economist, says that we want to take this chance to thank our development partners for three reasons. One, for availing resources. Two, for policy direction. And three, for structural adjustment. Mm -hmm. This was a foreign bill. It was drafted by foreigners who did not first of all understand what the constitution of Kenya. And they were just drafting because they wanted to find how we can collect more money. And it was extra constitutional. So I'm trying to say the, the process of the bill, when you want to draft a bill, any time, first of all, you have to do a legal, uh, a, legal, uh, a legal assessment, like let's say a legal review of the current economic and legal environment before you draft a bill. But these people just came with a bill, so that it was extra constitutional, extra intentional. You know, when you have intentional which are outside the constitution, and then you put up a team to draft it, which were extra constitutional team, which was World Bank and IMF. You are starting to enter a problem because if I'm the author of this book, I understand every chapter of it. If I'm not a Kenyan, I'm writing a book to help Kenyan economics. 
Then I'm, I'm should, should we so. should we expect the same issue this time round? We are, we are actually <laughs> so in the Friday budget five preparing uh, the other problem process. Is, the other problem is, is too many MPs passing a bill within too short a period of time. There's a bill was debated for two hours. 300 people in a house trying to debate a bill in two hours and passing. And then thirdly, lastly, the president normally say, this bill must pass. Remember the Finance Act? He said, if anybody does not pass the bill, there'll be no money for you in your, in your constituency. So there was a lot of pressure here from the head of state. It was directional. It was done. And then, of course, let me not just blame the, 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 the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs. Uh, Azimio also seemed also to uh, taking sides instead of reading the bill. Mm -hmm. Did Azimio go for a retreat, for example, in Aivasha or anywhere and sat down and said, let us put some resources here because these guys are given political parties fund. Did they invest that fund in thoroughly reviewing this article with, before they confront those people? So that instead of having 300 people, everybody carrying their hand and shouting at the speaker, you have one person with well thought uh, let's say deliberations that will present the points well because if you go there as a team of 200 MPs not coordinated you'll be shooting in different directions you'll even okay. shooting yourself and, and so the lack of coordination probably, probably should be should blamed be a question. on the hands of Azimio because they never coordinated themselves in this and we have the Secretary General for Jubilee Party who can mm. speak for Azimio here is there proper coordination in as far as legislators uh, from uh, the Azimio side the mi minority side in how to respond uh, or how to push back against uh, government policy in parliament or, or, um, even perhaps before I say that, let me say uh, one of the best ways, if you really want to find out whether a member of parliament understands what one is doing on the floor, it is not to speak to the bill that is important. It is to propose amendments. Mm -hmm. If you do not have amendments that you have proposed to the bill, speaking to the bill is a waste of our time. You are just a populist person. Mm -hmm. And the, past, the people who really want to inform uh, the legislative agenda on the floor they always look for the bill while it is going through public participation and propose amendments. Their own amendments or amendments as the public is speaking. Mm -hmm. That is then on the third reading, you have a set of amendments and the speaker does not even have to catch your eye. It is already there. He, she or he is forced to look at the amendments proposed on the order paper. Okay. So there is a deliberate way of ensuring that even speakers who are not worthy the, the, the title of a speaker must pay attention to what is already on the order paper. Okay. And by that he has to read out your name. And again I say that um, um, it is, uh, I, I have seen members of parliament even from uh, Azimio's side, there are those uh, even in Jubilee who, has always th who always thought that uh, um, they are supposed to be helped from outside for them to represent us inside. We are supposed to even represent them inside. I, it's another debate I can have with you for a long time because I was amazed at one point when I, I got a group of members of Parliament of Jubilee saying, you did not represent us. But is there, is there any form of coordination of these members <coughs> yes, from outside? We have from even a, in Azimio, we have even an, an, economic, an economic council. And uh, on the finance bill, we had a number of sittings with the members of, from our side to try and understand what the, the difficulties are going to, will be uh, once the bill is done. And we are also doing the same with the current finance bill. Admittedly, not enough time, because we call the members of parliament maybe for a uh, morning session, perhaps when they are going for an afternoon sitting. But it's also important to mention here that even as we talk about many things, including the political party funding, that was thrashed. Mm -hmm. we, you really have no money that can, you can afford to keep uh, the members of parliament informed. But that also does not take away the responsibility from them because remember they have uh, staff who are employed to help them through uh, some of these uh, bills. But, but that I, kind I of coordination, you must agree, from uh, an alternative uh, government perspective, uh, needs to be well coordinated because if at all most of the government sponsored bills are coming uh, with the weight no, of the no, tiring of numbers. No, I this. Eh? I have, we have heard it many times from Wandai, mm -hmm. which supports what Mwishi Muharashi is saying, that um, once the minority leader is given an opportunity to say something and one other person, is from that point onwards, it's like nobody else matters from that side. The leadership of the House has uh, a lot to answer to the mess that we are in. But also, 
Uh, William Ruto himself, there is, you cannot uh, exonerate him here and say there is a law that can be taken to parliament without him having understood. He is in cahoot with this uh, uh, international uh, lenders, this international institution in the name of IMF and World Bank. Because you are the, the one in charge of us, responsible for all that is being done. Whether by Mzungu or Muindi, whoever does it, you will be the one to answer. And there is no way a bill would be brought to the House without the cabinet having approved okay. it. Now that well, you looked I at want all to agree two things. Uh -huh. I want to agree two things. One is a mistake to have our issues being, uh, you know, I, don't, I didn't know they sit on the seventh floor, but it is a big bladder. Whenever <laughs> we have had IMF <laughs> and World Bank, dictate on what needs to be done in this country, we've already gone south. We mm -hmm. had it with Moi. Mm -hmm. But it is always the person sitting in state house. When you see people heckling people, you outside there, they are not making a mistake. They are heckling you for a reason. It is you seated in state house who, are, who are allowed them in and even give them a floor. Okay. My, my so concern is, mistake, now that we've pointed all out through, all these challenges, yes. and we are already in the budget-making process, the budget policy statement is already before Parliament, we're now looking at another finance bill, 2024. Last week there was a headline reading that there was a proposal uh, to even increase the, um, to impose a VAT, 16% VAT on milk and bread. Um, what we are seeing right now is that anything that comes from the executive passes. Are we saying that we're looking at the same scenario this time round? That whatever will come to Parliament, yes, they are the tyranny of numbers, uh, minority side will walk away or uh, give up and move <laughs> on, and then at the end of the day, Kenyans will have to pay that 16% yes. on milk and bread, and we have no choice about it. No, oh, I said, and I will repeat here, there is no way tax of bread and milk will pass through that floor of the house. I mean, it will be, we will have been the worst. I don't know what to call that parliament on that day. Because Members will not necessarily read it. They'll pass it, then complain later on. No, they can't. I mean, but I think they are learning through their mistakes also. Let us uh, agree that was the first financial bill. And they've realized you have to comp through. And you must look at your, you see, the problem we also face is like we forget you were elected by a constituency not by the whole country. So, but yes, you come in for the interest of your constituency. Mm -hmm. And how I wish as members of parliament, we can start looking at that. So that you look at the interest of your people and if they feel this is like for me, the interest of my constituency, fine, yes, they are farmers, yes. But they are in Nairobi, Shamba Lamawe. So they, uh, they, they, that's their shamba. Are you saying you're, seeing, you're going to see a shift in how even Kenya, Kwanzaa, and Pisa are going to yes. uh, treat this finance bill? Now, how do you go and face the deputy president and tell him we did not read? He doesn't sit in cabinet. Mm -hmm. So he's also wondering. Okay. Yeah. And, he's, and, and I think he was yeah. also shocked. All of them are getting shocked when they go on the ground and they realize there was something of avocado. Mm -hmm. They didn't know. Professor Even Ogola, them from the top, they we, didn't know. This is a trend we've seen. Yeah. It's not the first bill uh, that has been passed without changing a full stop or a comma. Uh, uh, Madam Elachi is hopeful that uh, this time around something will no, change. No, not hopeful. They've la they've we learned. will have to change. Do, do you believe that? So, so, friend, let me tell you what. Eh? And this is my... I, I love Azimil because in the run-up to the 2022 election, I was more of supporting because I was asking people that the question in the, in the election was not about who has a better manifesto. The question was about whom can you trust with your wallet and granary. And you see our granary are burning with the fertilizers now with, with the issue of kebs. You can see our granaries are burning, our wallets are being raided, our payslips are being raided, your bedroom has been raided, your, your road uh, transport has been raided, your sitting room has been kitchen has been raided, everything is being raided, and now they are raiding the kitchen with the issue of the milk and, and, uh, and sugar. I'm and she's denying. Mm -hmm. My biggest disappointment with Azimio as opposition is that they have no strategy to stop Kenya Kwanzaa from passing any draconian bill. They mm -hmm. don't have. They just cry victim. They have bought the idea. There is still any of numbers in, in the house. So they just cry. You even hear uh, 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 Honorable Balachi now is crying and saying that uh, even the speaker is theirs who does not even give them a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. Still any of numbers. They are bought into it. Even if you are a minority, do they have a strategy? Like I said, have a retreat. Put your team together. Go to the house, the compelling value proposition to others. Even, this, the, even there are some Kibaki ran this country with minority in parliament. Mm -hmm. 
and he had a strategy to pass some bills which were necessary. He even passed a constitution in 2010 with the minority in parliament. Strategy is more powerful than numbers. If they believe that, my, that if they say that the UDA had got many MPs who are not very intellectual enough, for them, the fewer MPs with intellectual, they should have intellectual uh, voltage to be able to counteract the numbers that are not having intellectual voltage. So that's my first point. The second point, and this is a now a very sad thing for Mazimi as well, Azimio continues celebrating the failure of Kenya Kwanza as if they have another country to go to. Mm -hmm. And they help Kenya Kwanza pass bills in parliament which are not nice saying, this is your skunk, and I can quote. Horre Bombadi told state, uh, 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 the parliament that the, 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 the Ruto's cabinet, which we know is the worst cabinet in the history of Kenya, that this is your skunk, your skunk we give you. Mm -hmm. The Finance Act was, this is your skunk, your skunk we give you. The budget, this is your skunk we give you. All amendment, NADCO report, this is your skunk we give you. Now, even this one coming for the budget for, 20, for 2024-2025 is a skunk. Imagine, and they will give it to you. Imagine to a budget which is 4.2 trillion, less than 900 billion going to development, the rest going to economic expenditure. I think Azimio needs to give us this one. They have, they have they read the bullet statement, it's written there. That's what's gonna happen. Are they going to work on it? So even this one is a skunk. Azimio needs to have a strategy. Okay. They, have, they have a budget. How much money is Azimio receiving in totality from political parties fund? And even MPs have a budget for research. Okay. They have allowances. They have some aids to do research for them. If they don't have, let them come to us, Alinda Jami, we give them a free service then. Okay. Time for us to take a break. When we come back, we'll scrutinize uh, uh, Azimio's role in this and whether there's an opportunity for them, even in the Mount Kenya region, uh, for any um, a sort of recourse and as far as their political standing is concerned. You're watching Morning Cafe on TV 47.
Cashons even during the break are more interesting sometimes <laughs> than even when we're on air. Mm-hmm. I'm calling in studio true. with Beatrice Lachi and Peter Goretti North, uh, Professor Fred Ogola, Economic and Governance Expert, and uh, Jeremiah Kioni, Secretary General, uh, Jubilee Party. We're talking about the conduct of Parliament and whether or not Kenyans should expect more of the same. In as far as tyranny of numbers are concerned, and that whatever government policy or bill or taxation measure that comes from the executive will simply pass and there's nothing we can do about it. Now, the role of the uh, opposition if I may call it that, even outside parliament, the Azimio uh, coalition comes into play. Uh, of course, with the expected exit of Raila Odinga uh, for that AU job and uh, the succession politics playing in, probably there's been a lot of toning down in as far as government pushback from that end. And we are seeing that even that is affecting the minority inside parliament. And um, many Kenyans are wondering, then what is the point of having a minority uh, inside parliament if at all the best they can do is walk out uh, because of the, there's a tyranny of numbers. Now we're talking about a 16% taxation on milk and bread. If things go as they are, it means Kenyans will still have to pay. Yet we have the minority side in parliament. Can they stand for Kenyans? Unakubuka mabo ni matatu. Mabo ni matatu. You are dealing with a very serious, uh, terrible dictator in the name of William Bruto. And when you are dealing with that kind of a, a character in State House, you have to be, you have also to know how to deal with him. I want to agree with what uh, my colleague is saying, and I tell you that uh, we have even, uh, at uh, not in one occasion, had uh, an alternative budget bill. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't want to go to the details of uh, what discussions we have had. But, um, we, we have a team, which had a gym in government, that came on a platform of lying to Kenyans, insulting others, left, right, and center, and uh, the know it all attitude. And um, Kenyans um, decided to give them a chance, one way or another. And it was, it, it was very difficult to tell Kenyans that we are getting in trouble. We are getting into a very serious problem, because we can tell even before you fought, that these guys are going to achieve nothing. Are you agreeing with Professor Ogola that uh, you decided to sit back and give them whatever they have? But it was important for Kenyans also to see for themselves that what 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 they thought was right is not working. Remember, when we decided to have a robust opposition, they said that we are not allowing them to work. They need 100 days. They need one year. They need two years. Last Sunday, I was in church, and uh, the, a minister, without any provocation or even anything, we, I did not even want to speak in the church. He told me to speak, I waved, and said, Dasanti sana nikaketi. But he was still looking for an opportunity to, to tell us to chat up. Chat up. This guy, let them, this, this guy, this guy is rule us for five years, mm-hmm. and uh, we will see the results at the end of the, the five years. Then you can, in fact, he sent me a text last night because I thought it was more than what uh, I, I had him pitch. So I sent him a few of the things happening, including the fake fertilizer, because he was telling us to shut up. And I was asking, if people are getting fake fertilizers and you do not want anybody to speak, is that right even for you as a bishop or as a minister of the mm-hmm. church? And he was saying, who do you marking scheme? I said, okay. But then there is a, a call of the voice of the voiceless that is there in the Bible, Proverbs, that one, one to nine. This is a minister of the church. So I tell you, the country is in a, was in a state, and I think we are still in a state where we need to come together as a people, not just the minority on the floor, as a people, and say no to this system. And that is why I agree with what uh, Professor is saying again, uh, that uh, we need to look at how can we recall this government or these people in government ourselves without waiting for members of parliament. Is it the because kind of strategy Azimio is looking being, at right now? Because, are, well, let me see. In, in the next two, three let months, we'll pass another budget. Just a minute. Unajua, Dugu, things are worse than what is written in these papers. Where we are as a country, mm-hmm. we really are, have gone down south completely. And there is no salvaging this, this uh, system, even through this finance bill. It's a terrible bill that is coming in the next couple of days. We already had our economic council and they flagged out the very dangerous provisions that are already in that bill. And we had our members of Azimio who cared to attend, whom we took through uh, the issues that needs to be released in that finance bill. Okay. But remember also, the opposition is not outside Bunge. In this, in this uh, government st- structure, the opposition is in Bunge. 
it is the on the floor that you oppose what you have seen Raira doing and all of us doing outside the parliament is really something that we because you feel this is not right are, are you it, comfortable with how the minority is handling it uh, because if at all uh, the opposition that's outside parliament decides to sit back the and allow Kenyans and allow Kenyans to see and the feel minority the experience the minority of the minority because it's a very small minority uh -huh. They're minority of the minority. Why is it that we had on the, this Nadiko report, we had the issue of fidelity to multi-party democracy? Because even the minority that we had has already been taken over. You have many members on our side in uh, uh, Azimio who really don't bother with what is happening on the floor because... But Bonakiona, it sounds like we've given up. I, yes. I, my, my concern now no, is, to this. should let Kenyans me, expect more let, of the same going forward? Let me tell you this. When you go to court, and you want to put your members to answer to the people, and the court frustrates you. And this man, William, he keeps them in state house, telling them how the bills should be passed, and they are paid in state house, then you can tell well, there's very little that we are going to be able to do wow. from where we are. But the Mirage, there's very little you're going to be able to do. The finance bill 2024 will pass as is, despite uh, Bonacchioni admitting that, yes, they've already flagged quite a number of issues that are not correct uh, in that uh, bill. That will come to Parliament, of course. Well, uh, then they can share too many. You don't need to share with only one team. I haven't seen uh, what they have flagged, to be very mm -hmm. honest. Yet you I come from the same political <laughs> formation. You have to and attend that, the meetings that are called by Azimi. It's that disconnect. Uh, no, no, no. It's no. that disconnect they or lack of coordination. They have not even called us for a meeting. You know, SG should not even go that route because I have not even seen an SMS calling me for a meeting. So Bona, not uh, got there. Prof, Professor but, Gola, you see the disconnect we are talking, talking about. They have no, no. Organize and we can't blame SG. SG is calling a jubilee. Mm -hmm. I'll be called by ODM, isn't it? No, but there's, a, there's a, an umbrella body you, only, you work uh, under there, I only it? have one whip and one majority leader who is of all of us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. When they send the message, we will go for the meeting. They have not sent. So they should not even blame even one member of parliament of, 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 of Azmio's side. Well, I have not seen the message, unless a few people are being sent to. But, but remember, you have your own responsibility, mm -hmm. don't okay, you? Yes, no, no. You are that, the one elected. That, that's why I was coming to that. I, I was about to say, but you see, as, as, as a member, I have a responsibility to look where the bill is and to follow through. And uh, the, the, the best we can say, I mean, for me, you know, I don't want to talk so much now about... I've always said, let's, let, let's now ask ourselves, what are the solutions? Yes, we are very few. Yes, Parliament is not the executive, it is a legislative arm. And I know we have members from both sides who think through differently, who are very objective. And it is time we have that bipartisan team that will be a team to protect Parliament. Mm -hmm. Not to protect the executive, to protect Parliament and protect the citizens by ensuring you speak your voice. Even if you won't speak on the floor of the House, then we can come up with an alternative brief. And this is something I told Azmio way back. They can check on their WhatsApp. I said, you cannot be coming in the floor of the house and you don't have an alternative and you want to say you are opposing. Opposing, what's the alternative to Kenyans? We don't have. Can we start having everything we feel this is wrong? Have the alternative of what you think would have been the best, and people will still borrow. And if at all the numbers are uh, not uh, friendly to your ideas, uh, would it be wrong for members of the minority to challenge some of these things at the judiciary uh, level? Is it is it is, well, is it something that can't we, happen? We have other people challenging, so I don't think it is. You see, you have been given, you have a house, you've been given powers. It is a house where you are supposed to do everything. I think what we should be doing is asking ourselves, those who believe to be very objective, you do what is rightful for the country and get out there. We will ask you in Dumeli, we'll ask for platforms, come and speak about it and create that awareness and say, look, yes, we know we are having this, but we wish to have this. Do you know some of those issues will be picked and will be enhanced in what you want to change? Okay. But until we have that, we will come here, we will blame, we will say this, we will say everything we are saying. But let me tell you, politics is very interesting. And I have learned to say, look at the country. If you want to look at the politics of Kenya, you see, 
you, you Kenyans, I don't know how we understand this hybrid. I think our constitution needed to start a new thing, a president's where the world would have borrowed. Because we believe in very hybrid things. A lot of That hybrid. are not working for us. Well, when it doesn't work, now we bring in the hybrid. That is why even in NADCO, we were not in NADCO, and yesterday we were questioning a few things. And we were saying, you have already forgotten that you just came from Bomas. We are here understanding you're supposed in 21 days to have a team of six. Nobody is questioning, even the side of uh, our ASMIO leadership. They are not asking, and you don't need to come and shout it at media. You just need to follow the same process. Mm -hmm. Have a team to deal with the modalities of what you wanted to achieve in NADCO and continue following through. Bring the six. I don't know how we are, how we are evaluating IEBC because I asked the same question. Before you even start evaluating, don't you think you need the commission now in? You, you first start cleaning and come in. Then now ask yourselves, how are we auditing? Because even if you send the team now, audit who? Okay. Get where the documentation, who signs out the documentation in, uh, from IEBC? Who is it the chairman? Does the law? You see. So there are so many things. And they confuse us. Will we get beyond even this dysfunction? Uh, will we get beyond this dysfunction? Because the question I'm asking is, should Kenyans expect anything different? It means we've agreed. There's a dysfunction in uh, Parliament, and uh, whether or not it's about the system we've uh, the appointed year 20, for ourselves. 24, you'll get something different. Professor I, Mola, yeah, that's how can I, we, I believe and I trust, forward, and I have How faith. can we get beyond this problem? You know, f for me, because I belong to the civil society, we have listened to this Parliament. I've taken 16 petitions to Parliament, myself, personally. I have 36 cases in High Court, which they should be doing. I spend personal money on it. They have a budget they don't want to spend. Like you had, uh, Honor Lachi saying, there are some people going. Mm. They have no budget. They are not elected by Kenyans. True. They, they have no obligation. They have no obligation to do. They're just doing because parliament has failed. If you want to know the number of failures, I'm an economist, know by the following. How many petitions are going to court which are done by Kenyans mm -hmm. who are not supposed to be doing it? There's a doctor, Dr. Gikenyi from Nakuru. Me and him are doing most of this, like remember the act, the finance act. It is, it is Linda Jami that proposed the issue of discrimination. And that's what slayed the, the finance act. When we went for the appeal, when they wanted to have standing order to continue collecting money, if you go to page 19, paragraph 46, it's my submission that again said that they cannot continue collecting because it was a very clear ruling that I put. I don't want to go into what I said, but somebody can read. The more we are not seeing opposition slaying government, the more they are dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they are playing into the gallery of the president. The president said, I am unstoppable. Why? He's looking at Azimio. They are so disorganized. Actually, he can control them and even define the agenda. And he's looking at a, a parliament he has bought with money, isn't it? And he's saying he's unstoppable. By, by, by the way, For he him to never... say he's unstoppable, he knows these people can't stop him. It's true. And he, 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 it's they have never stopped him since he was elected, isn't and, it? And, and if you look at Prof. the dailies today, you Prof. look you look for any instance. Unless he, you look he, for any he normally instance buys where his own uh, members. Uh, I don't Madam think Elachi, he has ever. I'm saying if we look at the media. Yes. To be with if we look at the media no. and uh, the coverage of news. There's no instance where any of these things have been challenged directly by Azimio, apart from one which I saw somewhere, and it was a very, yes, page six at yeah. the very bottom, one strip, I think it's 150 letter, uh, words, the standard page six, Ruto adding more burden on suffering uh, taxpayers, says Calonzo. That's the only instance but we you have. See, Fred, no, saying Fred, they're Fred, saying, Fred, and then, Fred, not you see, report, not just mm -hmm. be saying, not call report, is signed by Calonzo. I am so disappointed that Calonzo signed that thing. Mm -hmm. And I think if he signed for Calonzo, Calonzo was appointed by Raila Odinga, who is the leader of Azimio. I'm also disappointed. They would have not signed that thing without cost of living. According to us now, we are going to court to challenge any implementation of this thing without factoring why people went to the streets. Because that question, if it's not answered, NADCO report has not answered the question mm -hmm why people went to the street. People died. They called them heroes. I shed tears, my brother. When I see them go to burials and say, you are a hero, a hero that has not produced anything.
A hero died in Kondele. A hero died in Nairobi, in Uhuruma. And the hero has not seen cost of living going down. They are a hero for creating a position, a leader of opposition. They are a hero for creating position for politicians, mm -hmm. not solving the Mwanaichi issue. And okay. that's a concern for us in civil society. Okay. And let me just deliver my point. I'm saying that Azimio has to understand this, and I'm sure SG is here. The failure of the president is not the president's failure, mm -hmm. because when he's a rich man, the failure of the president is a failure of the whole nation. Yes. And the failure for our us, our children, and our children's children. Okay. So if they understand that, they should not be praising by saying, let them just fail, like let's let rule for five years. After five years, we have no country. And as a meal, need to stop politicking and develop a strategy that can stop Kenya Kwanzaa. If they realize they have no strategy, let them resign. Okay. And oh. let us have another opposition, yes. because according to me, the it's completely has dead. And I want to finish by when saying, I, only... I want to finish by saying, uh -huh. Fred, eh? you cannot expect a good outcome with no control of the process. As Emil has to understand, to control the Finance Act, to control the budget, they have to control the budget process from the beginning. Okay. And if they don't control the process, they cannot expect a miracle. Because people say, this is my dream, this is my outcome. In between here, there's a miracle. Unless there are witchcraft that they but, believe, but Kioni, that the witchcraft will confirm... Con, con, uh, con, the expectations being pointed out by Professor Gola are legitimate expectations because even the parties within Azimio do enjoy uh, the benefit of the political parties fund. Uh, from the last election, uh, Azimio got uh, almost 50% of the votes from Kenyans, meaning there are Kenyans who look up to Azimio to speak up for them. Is it right for Azimio to sit back and say, this is your skunk, have it? When Kwanza, when Professor says I resign, I had myself resign from where? <laughs> or oh, not you? Mm -hmm. I resign from where? <laughs> I mean, I am here because I chose to come and try and uh, inform this debate. Resign from where? Mm -hmm. <laughs> as a leader so I am of the Jubilee Party, the Jubilee oh, Party I, has a role to play in this. Yeah, those Which in parliament role? have a role to play in parliament, but mm -hmm. are they in parliament? The Jubilee Party is part of, in parliament, they themselves signed and said they are part of uh, UDA. So what we've been struggling with is to try and make them understand what they needed, the role they needed to play in the minority. They have already been taken over by uh, UDA. They are Ted UDA's, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, those PG meetings in State House, and they get what they are paid. And they are very happy to move around, even come here, and you don't charge them on that account. They are the ones to resign, not me. <laughs> me, I'm not elected. I'm here on uh, my own account. <laughs> me, 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 but you're an official of the Jubilee Party. Unofficial. I am an official, but that doesn't mean oh, I cannot resign from an official. I was not given by I'm not asking. Government. I'm not talking about the, so, the call for so resignation. So that you know, you know also, it, if you are also not able... It is a responsibility able, of, of, of Fazimi. You are a, not able to lay the problem where it should be. Me, 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 <laughs> I saw that, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, kujaribu, on my own account. Kujaribu kwa mucha watu wakiri. And when I sit here and I hear Rashi saying that we cannot blame, blame William Ruto, that's where the problem is. When, where? You, when you feel like you want to protect the William and he did not elect you, that's the problem with that bunge. They are out to protect William more than protect the people. And that we told them. No, I, I didn't you say have, you no, can't no, blame I, him. Because like because now. Because one of the things I you, never do SG, uh, like the way finish, SG. Let me finish and then you can take. Uh, you can, I will mm -hmm. be happier to hear what are the proposals in the finance bill that they have gone through. You still haven't answered her. my question. No, no, I'll have, come to that. Not from I, me. I I'm not a answer. member of the committee. Okay. They know yeah, the members yeah, they put in go. the committee. There you go. If yes. she's not a member of the committee yeah. and she's waiting for the document to come to the floor, I form, am not waiting. Then I have there will the not be anything other than a chorus. No, no, I would be expecting no, no. to hear no. this bill, like I can you tell see, you. What SG should be telling us uh, is how... Can to finish? No, no, I won't allow first to finish before I say this. Okay. You see, SG. Let me say this because it is my time. Okay. I I'll, I'll give, give it. We are almost at the end of it. I'll the finance bill is too. proposing something called the minimum tax. It yes. is also proposing something called security tax. Security tax. tax yes. I, those are the things I would be expecting somebody mm -hmm. on the floor to be telling us because they are the ones engaging with the bill permanently. Mm -hmm. But we already and we had a meeting uh, as an economic council where we flagged the dangers, the damaging pro pro provisions that are there in the act. So I want to say this that uh, that. Um, we have many issues that we can lace with Azimio, but we have very limited role. If you are your front, because this is why we had 
among the five issues that we put before Nadiko, one was it was uh, fidelity to multi-party democracy. Mm -hmm. If multi-party democracy is not functioning, then the opposition cannot, minority cannot even function on the floor. Okay. And that is an issue that is not even being addressed today. William says that they are going to implement Nadiko to the letter. When he is saying that, he already has all the members of Jubilee and some members of ODM, <laughs> a big number of uh, DAP, a number of uh, members from WIPA with him in State House. So how is it that we, Nazimio, who are outside, are supposed to push any agenda on the floor okay. when you took away the arm or the, the, the front of the spear that you're supposed to use? So the failure that we have have nothing else to do with anybody else. Okay. It is William Ruto himself. Okay. His approach to this, he does not believe in the 2010 constitution. He does not believe in multipartyism. And the he failure is right inside parliament. Right inside because he went and bought all of them. Okay. Madam Elijah, okay. as you make your final comments as well. Yes. Now, let me say this today. In leadership, when you lead your team, you lead from the front. You stand firm from the front. Mm -hmm. And what we should be agreeing today, that the biggest challenge is not even members of parliament, or as me, or par members of parliament. The biggest challenge is where you lead from. And I'll say this, it's because in Azmio, we all focus on one. Baba has to help. Mm -hmm. If Baba is not there, things cannot, co cannot work, cannot coordinate, cannot do. It is wrong. And this is what the team, the Azimio leadership should start getting into their mind. That number one, when you say you have met in an economic council, fine. Have you called your members now to say, the finance bill is coming. And, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have not sent a message. You have not done everything. You have not even finished. When you were doing NADCO, it was like you hide. Then in the end, even when they were going to present, you can't call your members. You just see people presenting, presenting. Then one day you are called. When you are called, who has unpacked? Mm -hmm. Even this finance bill we are talking who has ever called Azmio to say, now we have unpacked mm -hmm. the finance bill. These are the issues you did wrong, wh whether we didn't pass it, we, we said no, yes, but these are the issues that still are gonna hurt. And so okay. as we go to the new finance bill of 2024, 2025, before even that one comes, these are serious amendments as per Azimio. Okay. So when you come, and you let members, as we are running, everyone is now running their things in their constituency because you run, you go to the house, you do your things alone. There is no team. Okay. I have never, I have been an SG. And we used to have a stand on what we want. And I will go and do research and ensure mm -hmm. that the whole team understands okay. this and give them the notes because you know members, are not members who will read. Let us be very honest. Okay. Let's allow uh, the rest at least a minute and so a half. For Professor me, and Kioni. The team. Final comments. Here. If you fail down, when you fail as a family, Everyone look fails. at the top. Okay. Professor, a minute and a half. Yeah, for me, I'll just give my <coughs> statement. I'll now stop talking about Parliament by saying that uh, um, I'm so heartbroken that uh, the level of government service in this country it's at its lowest point ever in the history of Kenya. And uh, if I just pick the sector, because you can see the front page here, healthcare and education, which are my greatest passion in this country as in trouble. You look at what is happening in the education sector. Even doctors want to, teachers want to go on strike, you could see. Kupet has already talked about some deduction not taking place. Uh, healthcare doctors are on a strike. But instead of the head of state and this government, I mean parliament, focusing on what, what to do with doctors' health crisis we're having in the country, what the president is doing, which I've done research and found out that he's just plucking, plucking all the media who are very strong in different media houses and giving them jobs in ministries so that the government cannot be questioned strongly on health matters. And as I speak now, Linda Jamie received a call from all countries. Remember we have, uh, represents in all counties in Kenya. We got a call from Mombasa where even the governor is telling the media not to cover any story about Dr. Strike in Mombasa. I want to urge the media, I'm sure TV 47 
has presence in all counties. Please give doctors a voice and airtime so that they can be heard. As I said, SG has said, the country is worse than what you see on the papers, meaning that there is some truth which is not coming to the media, okay. and the media needs to dig the real truth. Don't, ask, don't give us what is called views. We want news. News is exactly how it's happening on the ground. Okay. And I want to urge uh, everybody where we are that it is good that we offer government services to people uh, but because the president began by threatening the media, Gachagua threatening the media, now they are trying to buy the media, isn't it? And that still won't work. That money you are spending on threatening or buying the media, give services to the people, okay. and we will not have anyone to deal with. We shall thank you and wish well. But for now, I said by saying, this government, we cannot wait for 2027. If they are failing, they should go home now. And if at all, uh, S.G. Keone is serious about it. Linda Jami has already drafted a bill on how to amend Article 1 of the Constitution, recall the President and Deputy President plus Parliament to go home because they're only politicking and there's no business. You cannot cure an economic Thank issue you, with a political tool. Okay, uh, finally. Uh, I was Mike in Keone. Saburu for a body of uh, an MCA and the media again was told, do not cover. Anything that we said from Saburu, including the very high level of insecurity that is there was not covered. So the media, as you challenge parliament and executive, has also a lot to play. See what I has also complained about the issues of the education sector. Again, what have you done to Adai? The standard, a very small thing, Ukoju, know nothing about the story. So uh, a couple of things are also being said by the opposition. They also need to be covered by the media. Um, and again, um, it is, I still, I uh, want to say that uh, you expect a lot from the floor of the house. And especially when you are called and things are said, like the last statement I saw from William was that we cannot allow a community to uh, develop alone and leave others behind. Mm -hmm. So it's like even your own children. And this is said when uh, our leaders are there, nobody uh, questioned it. It is very important that uh, we get the house to do their law and to appreciate if you're in the minority, remain in the minority, if you're in the majority, both you are still members of parliament and you have an important law to play. But for as long as that infidelity, I call it uh, the neighboring of political prostitution is going on uh, on the floor of the house, you still, con you still continue seeing Kenyans frustrated. And we will have to rely on two institutions. One, the judiciary, and two, the, the, the civil society. They are the ones now that we, we look upon. Even when we sit in Azmio, okay. we are actually asking which of the NGOs can take on this issue and take it to court. Okay. Which of these can we go to court? That is the debate that we have in Azmio. Mm -hmm. Because from that, they are the front of Bunge, also sold to Ruto. Thank you so much, Jeremiah Kioni, Secretary General, uh, Jubilee Party, uh, Bitu Selachi, MP Dagoriti North, and uh, uh, Professor Fred Ogola, Economic and Governance Experts. Our panelists this morning, thank you so much for helping us understand or debate this issue that is key to Kenyans right now. We also want to thank uh, those people watching us online on various platforms who have been following this conversation. Thank you so much, and we value you. Straight to editorial comment this morning. In light of recent events and today's planned protest march by striking doctors, it is crucial that we remind the police of their role in upholding the constitutional rights of citizens to assemble and demonstrate peacefully. The Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union has given notice of the intention by its members to hold a procession to voice their grievances, which is well within their rights as guaranteed by Article 37 of the Constitution. The previous protest match organized by the KMPDU ended in violence, with the Secretary General Dav Giatella being injured due to police actions. That incident brought to the fore the need for law enforcement agencies to exercise restraint and respect for the rights of citizens to express their discontent peacefully. The planned protest match is a response to legitimate grievances, including the delayed posting of medical interns and the payment of fees to postgraduate students. These are critical issues affecting the healthcare system, and the doctors have every right to demand action from the government. The use of excessive force against peaceful protesters is not only unjust, but also counterproductive. It only serves to escalate tensions and undermine the principles of democracy and freedom of expression. We urge the police to refrain from interfering with the planned protest much and instead facilitate a peaceful demonstration by ensuring the safety of all.